What's up guys, my name is Ace, and welcome to the first episode of COD World War II Gun Guides. This is the series where I go into great detail with all of the stats of every one of the weapons in COD World War II. With this series, I'll be bringing in as many visuals as possible to not only tell you how the gun works, but also to show you how the gun works. In addition to this, towards the end of the episodes, I'll be sharing what I feel are the best attachments and the best class setups to use. With this being the first episode, I'm just going to give you a heads up here, things are going to change throughout the year. Make sure you stick around and keep following the update videos because throughout this series, anytime there's a weapon balancing change, I'll be making a separate video and including it as part of this series. Without further ado, let's hop into the first episode, which is covering the PPSH-41. Starting it off with some real life stats, this Soviet submachine gun was introduced in 1941 as the name suggests, and it fires a 7.62x25 Tokarev pistol round. Its real life rate of fire is roughly 900 rounds per minute. When we get into COD World War II, the damage profile is 30, 28, 23, 19. What this means is every character in core game modes has 100 health. In hardcore game modes, you have 30 health. So when it's dealing 30 damage, it's going to take 4 shots to reach that 100 health threshold. At 23 damage, it's going to take 5 shots, and at 19 damage, it's going to take 6 shots. Now that 28 damage range doesn't actually affect this gun really at all in core modes, that's just for hardcore modes, which is great to see in this game, they're actually balancing guns specifically for hardcore, and this allows them to drop off that one shot kill potential wherever they want between that 30 and 23 damage range. But in core game modes at least, it's always going to be a 4, 5, or 6 shot kill, and we'll have a look at the ranges here in a little bit. Its rate of fire in the game is actually significantly lower than in real life at 722 rounds per minute. Now the reason these rates of fire are different is for balancing purposes. There are certain roles within the game that developers want to be filled by various weapons, and if you have too many weapons that are too similar, then it just doesn't work out balance-wise and there's not enough variety. So they did end up taking a few liberties with some of the historical fire rates. When we combine our damage profile and our rate of fire, we get our minimum statistical time to kill at 249 milliseconds up close, 332 milliseconds within the 5 shot kill range, and then finally within the 6 shot kill range it's going to take 416 milliseconds to get a kill. So overall for time to kill, the PPSH is right around in the middle for SMGs. There are certain ranges where the PPSH will excel over other SMGs, but overall it doesn't really stand out in any particular area. It's not the fastest time to kill weapon in the game, but then again it's certainly not the slowest. Moving on to headshots, we can cover this one really quickly with all of the SMGs pretty much. We get a headshot multiplier of 1.1, and what this means is our headshot damage profile jumps up to a 33, 30, 25, 20. And essentially what this means is don't worry about headshots. Unless you're hitting every single bullet in the head at ranges, headshots are completely useless to you. And when you factor in the recoil for SMGs, that's just not going to happen. So unless you're going for the headshot camos, don't even think about going for headshots with this gun. Moving on to ranges, these are very important when it comes to weapon balancing. For our 4 shot kill range, it extends out to approximately 16 meters. Then it drops off to a 5 shot kill range, and that 5 shot kill range extends out to 25 meters. And then beyond 25 meters, even out to infinity, it's going to take 6 shots to kill. When we're using the airborne division, we have the option to attach a suppressor to the weapon, and that suppressor reduces your ranges by 30%. As for advanced rifling, assuming we don't have the suppressor on, it increases all of our ranges by 25% with this weapon. So personally, I think they're both good attachments to use on the weapon, especially advanced rifling. Suppressor is a very situational sort of thing. If you're not really trying to be stealthy and flanky, then don't worry about the suppressor. But if you do get on the flank and you don't want to be popping up on the radar, it's not a bad choice with the PPSH-41. Now generally this series is going to be designed around core modes, but I will show you the ranges here really quick for hardcore modes. As you can see here, it's got a 10 meter one shot kill potential in hardcore. Beyond that, it's going to be two shots to kill. Moving on to idle sway, just in case you guys aren't aware, idle sway is how much your sights are going to be moving around when you're aiming down sight. As you can see, it has a decent amount of idle sway. Normally, in close quarter situations, you won't really be noticing this, but if you ever try to take one of those fights at sort of mid to somewhat longer ranges, the idle sway will definitely have an impact on your ability to hit your target. For recoil, the PPSH has a very high magnitude recoil, but you'll notice it's almost entirely vertical recoil. And this is actually a good thing. This means it's very easy to predict and very easy to control with this weapon. Of course, you're still not going to be able to pick people off across the map consistently with this gun, but just know, even though the recoil is relatively high, it's very predictable and very controllable. Moving on to the hip spread values of this weapon, it's actually standard for SMGs. It's right in line with the Grease Gun, Type 100, and MP40. All of these are going to be better than the Waffa and the M1928. So next up, let's have a look at the magazine capacity of this weapon. 
Our standard magazine capacity is 35 rounds, and our starting ammo, not including the magazine that's in the gun when you spawn, is going to be 105 rounds. With extended mags, we actually throw a drum magazine on here, and that gives us a 52 round capacity with a starting ammo of 156 rounds. For our reload add time, keep in mind reload add is the amount of time it takes without the unnecessary animation at the end. So this is with reload cancelling, our reload add time is 1.50 seconds. Getting into some of the handling and mobility stats of the PPSH-41, the standard aim down sight time is 200 milliseconds, which is among the fastest in the SMG category and in the game. It's only matched by the WAFA in the SMG category, all the other SMGs are slightly slower. And our sprint out time, once again, is among the faster SMGs in the game at 225 milliseconds currently. I do partially expect this value to change throughout the year, but we'll just have to wait and see, and this is just one of those things where you have to keep up with the channel so you can see when these changes are made, if they do in fact ever get made. Our standard movement speed with the PPSH is 100%, which is pretty standard for SMGs, and our aim down sight strafe speed, so the speed that we have when we're strafing side to side in a gunfight while aiming down sight, this is reduced to 70%. So that's going to wrap it up for all the important stats of the PPSH-41. When comparing it to the other SMGs in its current state, this is kind of the jack of all trades of the SMGs. It's good in every area as far as SMGs go, but it doesn't necessarily excel in any one particular area. It's got a good time to kill without being an amazing time to kill. It's got high recoil, but that recoil is very easy to control and predict. It's got excellent mobility and handling stats, and its range values are quite good for the SMGs. So in its current state, when we're looking within SMG ranges, the PPSH is probably the most versatile out of the group. So now that we have all the stats out of the way, let's start getting into my recommended attachments for this weapon, as well as a few class setups that I think will get you on the right track with this weapon. The iron sights on the PPSH are great, so I wouldn't recommend using the lens sight or the reflex sight. Iron sights are just fine with this gun. For me personally, the top three attachments to be running on the PPSH are going to be quick draw, extended mags, and advanced rifling. That's not to say that you should never use some of the other attachments, I just feel like attachments like the grip and rapid fire, they're not doing enough for you to help you in enough situations, whereas the other attachments I listed are definitely helping you a lot. Steady aim is also a very viable choice with this weapon, and with FMJ, I wouldn't really consider putting this on an SMG, because there are very few situations where you'll want to shoot through surfaces with an SMG, and also, for shooting down score streaks, generally you're not going to be accurate enough to shoot down most score streaks. So finally, let's have a look at a couple class builds that I have set up for this particular weapon. Keep in mind, these are just meant to be examples. Of course, if something else suits your playstyle better, feel free to change it. I don't want you to necessarily just copy and paste these classes because I said that was the best. Use what works for you. This first one here is my rushing airborne class with the PPSH. So with this one, we're obviously using the airborne division. We've got quick draw and extended mags on here. And with this one, I will often switch to the suppressor when I get towards an enemy flank, or when I get into a situation where I don't want to be popping up on the radar. Our basic training skill is scoped, which allows us to strafe a little bit faster in gunfights and help us win those gunfights a bit more effectively because we're using airborne rather than infantry, and also it reduces our idle sway, which allows me to hit those shots at those mid-ranges a bit more effectively. For a secondary, I just threw machine pistol on there, that's just kind of my default secondary that I go with, and we have a sticky grenade on here as well. Moving on to my infantry build for the PPSH, sometimes I really like using infantry because it gives you that extra attachment and it allows you to strafe even faster in gunfights than with the scope basic training skill. And with this one, I also throw on primed. This allows me to have four total attachments on this weapon and this build is designed purely for winning face-to-face -face gun battles. With this one, once again, we have quick draw and extended mags, but we also have steady aim and advanced rifling thrown on this class. Once again, secondary is going to be that machine pistol, and our lethal is going to be the sticky grenade. For some reason, I just love that sticky grenade. So finally, let's have a look at a build that I have for more of an objective role in the game. So if you're playing objective modes like War or Domination, something along those lines, this one is excellent for that. With this one, we're using the armor division, and then pretty much everything else is the same as the first build. We've got quick draw and extended mags, machine pistol, but we have a smoke grenade on this class as well. This is excellent for throwing your body on the flag or on the objective, still winning your gunfights when you get up there, but you can play the objective very effectively and you don't have to worry so much about those nades. So there we have it. That's going to wrap it up for the first gun guide for World War II. I'd like to know in the comments section below, first off, what do you guys think of the PPSH? Do you think it's a good SMG, a bad SMG? Does it need a buff? Does it need a nerf? Let me know what you think of the gun overall. And second, what weapon would you like to see me cover next? I'm not necessarily going to be sticking to any particular class of weapon, so next episode isn't necessarily going to be an SMG. What gun would you like to see covered next? If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.